to continue on with our many, many wonderful practices here in the life of our church. Any uh, announcements that just need to be made today? Did I miss one? We have a birth. Tell us more. Uh, Lene and Corky, my turn, have their daughter. Yay, Lene and Corky had their daughter. A little early, and I'm sure she's happy. Very good. Praise the Lord. Any other announcements? All right, let's stand up and let's praise our Lord. You called me from the grave by name. You called me out of all my shame. I see the old has passed away, the new has come. Now I have resurrection power, living on the inside of Jesus. You have given us freedom, no longer bound by
In the darkness we were waiting, without hope, without light. Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes. To fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word. From a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt. stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the father are restored and the church of christ was born then the spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth of great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ my living lord who could imagine so great a mercy, what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my 
you bow your heads and humble your hearts as we go into the presence of the Father. Let us pray. Holy Father, today we come to celebrate you on this Resurrection Sunday. God, you are truly our living hope. We thank you that you sent your only son to die on a cross for us that we might have freedom, life everlasting, and abundant life here on earth. Jesus, we thank you that you went willingly to suffer, to agonize, to be filled with shame, to take on our sin. But Jesus, you are victorious. And now, there is no sin, no death, because you have wiped it clean. And now we are victorious through you. So today, we just take a moment to humble ourselves before you as you sit on the throne. And we declare the victory. We claim forgiveness. We claim healing. We claim you, Jesus. You are our all in all. And so now, Father, we give you glory and honor as we worship you on this Easter Sunday. We come together as one body, praising your name, claiming the victory. And now we join together our voices as we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now if you'll receive this offering of music as we're mindful of our giving back to God. How 
sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. For I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. The prodigal is welcomed home, the sinner now was saved. For the God who died came back to life, and everything has changed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, fear, where is your power? The mighty King of kings has disarmed. I'll see your scars, your open arms, the beauty of your face. Through tears of joy, I lift my voice in everlasting praise. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Oh, death, where is your sting? It is now time for the children and tweens sermon. Can all the children and tweens come forward? (laughs) 
Now, ain't that a good sight? Good job, Evie. Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Are you having a wonderful Easter? Yeah. There are so many things that remind us of Easter, like beautiful flowers, like that's back behind me. Yeah. Um, what about chocolate Easter bunnies? Hmm. What about what about beautiful Easter baskets that some of you woke up to this morning? That's pretty neat. But there's one thing that all of us think of, and what do you think it is? Yes, it is God, but an Easter egg. How many of you had an Easter egg hunt this morning? How many of you will have an Easter egg hunt today? How many of you have had some type of Easter egg hunt this week? Three. Goodness, that's a lot of Easter egg hunts. <laughs> That's funny. Well, you know why we have eggs for Easter? It's because it's a symbol of new life. Did you know that? When a mother hen sits on her eggs for a few week weeks, what happens? It hatches. It begins to crack. And what comes out of it? A baby chick. And that's new life, right? That new life comes out, out of it. And we celebrate Easter Sunday because that is the day that Jesus came out of the grave and he is alive. So this morning I have brought this egg and I will show you. I call it the real Easter egg and I'm going to show you why I call it the real Easter egg. Are y'all ready? What's inside of it? How's that it's possible? Empty. That egg is empty. And it reminds me of the Easter Sunday when Jesus' followers went to his tomb and it was in empty. And an angel was there to tell them, He is not here. He has risen just as he said. We'll talk about it in a minute. <laughs> Uh -huh. The grave is empty. Jesus isn't here. He is alive. And because he's alive, we too can have a new life in him. Let's pray. Dear Lord, today we celebrate the empty grave. We thank you that Jesus is not in the grave. He is risen. And because of that, we can have a new life in him. Amen. Amen. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of energy. <clears throat> All right, let's practice one more time. Remember, as Christ is risen, truly he is, is risen. We ain't in the past tense. He is risen. So, Christ is risen. All right, y'all hold on to that. Remember, I'm going to do Christ is risen. I'm going to point at you, and then you do truly is risen. Okay. Now, today we're going to be looking at a, a, a passage from Scripture and it is a, it's, a, it's telling us, it's foretelling us about the core of the gospel. It's telling us about the resurrection. So since it's telling us about the resurrection, I'm going to, and the core of the gospel, I'm going to have you stand for the reading of Psalm 82, uh, verses 6 through 8. Hear then these words from the psalmist. You are gods, all of you are sons of the Most High. Yet you will die like mortals, you will fall like any other rulers. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for to thee belongs all the nations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Christ is risen. Good job. 
that is the Easter claim, is it not? More specifically, the Easter claim goes really something more like this. God became truly human. The God-man Jesus truly died. The God-man Jesus truly bodily rose from the dead. This is the Easter claim, but it's what we mean when we sum it up with Christ is risen. As you can see, that phrase that we say means a lot more than just those few words, which makes it kind of crazy. How so? Because no self-respecting God or deity in the history of all the other religions would have ever lowered themselves to become a lowly human being. The gods of all the other religions were so far outside of us that the idea of coming among the, the humans as truly a human was unthinkable. To think that the one, the true God, who is the reason that existence exists, is above all things, above, uh, with, uh, outside of all things, and within all things, would be for us to be really, that's just kind of absurd. Which means that the idea that God, in whom all of existence depends on for existence, could ever die, is even crazier. And then add to that, the idea that Jesus, who is truly God, who did truly die, add to that that he rose from the dead, and you must be, at the very least, borderline insane. Nevertheless, that is the Christian claim. Jesus is the one true God, become truly human, and truly died, and truly rose from the dead. That is what we mean when we say, Christ is risen. And so, the first thing I need to say to all of us gathered here on this fine Easter Sunday morning is, welcome to the crazy club, okay? We're in it. But that's not all. There's, there's more. When we say, Christ is risen... We are daring to say something that's never been said before. No other religion has ever been able to bring themselves to say that the one true God became truly human, truly died, and truly rose. None, not one. When the, this gospel proclamation, this message of, was announced, most people found it unbelievable. It was preposterous. It was like nothing that had ever been heard before. Even now, it is unbelievable to most modern people for exactly the same reasons. Sometimes it's even unbelievable to some Christians. They think that this, this whole resurrection thing is just a metaphor, and they will ask a question like, where is Jesus' body? And when we say that he rose from the dead, their materialistic mentality just thinks that Jesus' soul was raised in some kind of spiritual, ethereal experience, but his body must have been kept somewhere. They must have hidden it. But that's not the Christian claim either. When we say he bodily rose from the dead, that is at its heart, a, 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 an earth-shattering message. We are saying that his, the heart that stopped beating when he gave up his life on the cross began pumping again. What we are saying when we say he rose from the dead is that the lungs that stopped breathing suddenly started inhaling again. What we're saying when we say he rose from the dead is that the God-man who had been crucified to death like the thieves beside him walked out of his tomb on the legs that formed in his mother's womb, the Virgin Mary. His resurrection body functioned differently than before, no doubt, but it was still his own body and he was still the same Jesus. And guess what? The tomb was empty. They were not hiding his body somewhere else. Again, Christ is risen. When we say that, it should cause people to laugh at us and call us crazy. 
It should sound as silly as the idea of a body in a coffin at a funeral suddenly sitting up and asking for a hand to get out. And the life that Christ took up is not some kind of zombie life where he's a mindless, moaning body wandering around in search of brains to munch on. No thank you, Hollywood. No. This is life in its truest sense, a life that sees and smiles and speaks, and guess what? Even eats. He is alive. Christ is risen. And that changes everything. In fact, that's a mighty bold statement. To make that claim is anything but normal. But then again, the gospel claim is not some little denatured bit of spiritual comfort that we state just to make us feel better. Our claim is that the God who created all things blasted his way into our reality and smashing death and wiping out its power. 1 Corinthians says it best, 15, 55, O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? This gospel of the resurrection was so powerful that all but one of the 12 apostles were killed for proclaiming it. The apostles voluntarily went to their deaths, witnessing to the fact that they had seen the risen Jesus and that they would preach the resurrection no matter what happened to them. They were constantly out there saying, our God is not dead. He is alive. Christ is risen. And because of that, our last enemy, death itself, has been defeated. But, you knew there'd be one of those, didn't you? There's even more than that. Now, you may have noticed that I did not choose to preach on one of the more traditional resurrection gospel accounts. Rather, I chose a few verses from Psalm 82. But why? Well, let me explain. In the Greek, the word that describes the moment of Christ's resurrection is anastasis. Literally, it means the arising. That word has a particular meaning. It means to stand up, to come to attention. It is an aggressive, almost military term. We might even translate it as uprising instead of resurrection, which is what I chose for my title of the sermon this morning, the uprising. So in order to understand Christ's victory over death properly, we must first realize that the uprising, the resurrection, is not some simple metaphorical victory that ends the physical effect of death. Rather, it is much, much more. The defeat of death, more importantly, the destruction of the last power of the devil and the demons over us, that's what's going on. This is the context that allows us to read Psalm 82 and understand its full meaning. It is the arising, the resurrection that Psalm 82 is speaking about as a prophecy. And with that in mind, let's hear that scripture once again now, that we have that context. You are God's sons of the Most High. That's God's little g, and Most High is God big G. All of you, nevertheless, shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for to thee belongs all the nations. So, what is that saying? It is saying, arise, O God, stand up and judge the gods, little g. By the way, that's talking about the fallen angels. Psalm 82 is not talking about human beings here. It's talking about angels. It's talking about the fallen angels, those who have rebelled against God Most High from the very beginning. They are the demons. They are our enemies. And what is more, he announces that they will die like mortals because they have afflicted humankind and sought to corrupt and destroy us since the Tower of Babel, not the Garden of Eden, 
But the Tower of Babel, that's a sermon for another time. This prophecy of the uprising given centuries before Christ's resurrection brings judgments to the earth and sets things right. By the way, when you see that phrase, sets things right, that's what God's justice is all about, setting things right. But that's a sermon for another time also. The arising, the resurrection, returns Christ to the authority over all the nations, an authority that had been abused by the demons, which is why we suffer. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for to thee belongs all the nations. Indeed, Christ now rules in the midst of his enemies, as Psalm 110 tells us. He has defeated the demons. They are routed, but in their retreat, they still rage and they still seek to draw as many of us they can into the destruction with them. So when we say, Christ is risen, it is not some little bit of spiritual comfort to make us feel better. Rather, it is an open declaration of our allegiance to Jesus Christ and the defeat of our common enemies. When we say Christ is risen, it is an act of spiritual warfare. And in spiritual warfare, guess what? There is no neutral ground. There is no Switzerland. So if you are not on God's side, living the angelic life, you are with the demons. There's no middle ground. And what is more, there are no civilians in spiritual war. Everyone is in the fight, period. No exceptions. And so when we say Christ is risen, we are making a choice. We are joining a side. We are entering into a battle. This is why John Chrysostom can say at the end of his Easter homily preached in the 4th century, Christ is risen and hell is overthrown. Christ is risen and the demons are fallen. Christ is risen and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen and life reigns. Christ is risen and not one dead remains in the grave. For Christ being raised from the dead is the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. And so to him belongs all glory, all honor, all dominion, all majesty until the ages of ages. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. It's time to go to war. Amen? Let's pray. Oh, Lord, what a glorious day. Death has been defeated. You are risen, and our enemies are in retreat. And yet we know that the world thinks that we're crazy. What you have done is so hard to comprehend in our modern age. Thank you for setting us free. Now allow us to be your witnesses, to join the battle, and to proclaim with all the angels, Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. All this we ask in the name of Christ our Lord. Would you stand together as we affirm our faith in God? For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Would you remain standing as we sing our closing song? Yeah.
is crowned with glory now. The Savior knelt to wash our feet. Now at his feet we bow. The one who Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Forward into battle. Amen. Go in God's peace. Your name, your name.